The bottom line is with Bitcoin, you have to start to be aware that there are factors here that are going to cause issues for Bitcoin. This is a long-term trend, right? You hammered on it here. You hammered on it right here. You broke above it. Now you hammered on the opposite side. If we break below 28,500, 400 area and we confirm using the confirmation signal, that gives us now a downward channel or a break of the trend. Bitcoin, the world's leading cryptocurrency, recently experienced about nine days of steady bullish momentum. However, it has now entered a steep correction and is giving back some of those gains. On Wednesday, Bitcoin prices briefly dropped to $28,700, which is its lowest price since April 10th. This market downturn is not limited to Bitcoin alone as several asset classes, including other cryptocurrencies, have also been affected due to economic uncertainty in the United States. At present, Bitcoin is down by over 4% in 24 hours, and the leading altcoin, Ether, is trading just below $2,000, experiencing a 7% drop and its lowest price in a week. In a recent episode of his weekly game plan broadcast, popular technical analyst Gareth Soloway gave a detailed analysis of Bitcoin's latest price movements. Despite some analysts believing that Bitcoin is entering a new bull cycle, Soloway still has reservations about the possibility of any significant rally in the short term. He cites extreme economic uncertainties and a plethora of unresolved regulatory issues as reasons for his stance on the leading crypto asset and other cryptocurrencies. Soloway gives some important levels investors can watch for within the next weeks. He believes this period is most critical for Bitcoin and, by extension, the overall digital assets industry. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. We are at a major resistance. I've said this till I'm blue in the face. Um, the 30,500 level is the level to watch. A lot of people kind of round it down to 30,000. No, the technical level is the technical level, 30,500. Look at what we've done right along here on the chart. Bitcoin has hammered on this over and over again. This is the daily chart. We even had a doji right here, which is a bearish signal where it popped above and then got slammed down right to that level. I love how it flushed two days ago, rallied back, and now it's flushing again. The level I'm watching for short, for short term bias. So right now you're at resistance, but honestly, resistance can be broken. That's a possibility. If we break below 28,500, 400 area and we confirm using the confirmation signal, that gives us now a downward channel or a break of the trend. So from, for me, you're now, and by the way, these two lines are going to meet. So this is going to happen over the next week or two at longest. But right now, look for this support line right here. Also notice, I want to show you this, how if we connect these highs right through here, this line actually merges right at that point. So 28,500, 400, if we break below that, that is very bearish for Bitcoin. Okay, the other thing I have to talk to you guys about is there's so much FOMO out there. There is so much. You go on Twitter, you go on Instagram, you go anywhere out there. Everyone's talking about alt season. Everyone's talking about this. The alts are going to start going 100x or 10x or 5x, whatever it is. My issue with that is that basically because that narrative is out there, everyone's already positioned themselves long. If you haven't seen the alts go yet, and everyone's already believing that it's going to happen, that's a very, very concerning issue. Because again, think about this. Who's going to drive the alts up now? If all the little investors are in because they believe the alt season is coming after the Bitcoin run, how or who is going to now push it up via using massive amounts of money? That's problematic. Remember, the psychology of the market dictates, and psychology is key right up here. And hey, listen, we can go to, I mean, heck, let's go to some charts out there. Um, one of the ones, by the way, Matic, I mean, look at this. I mean, this is not a good chart here at all. But Matic, again, guys, right on that support line, you're not seeing the price action, to me, that denotes an alt-season rally, all right? You're not seeing it. And also, keep in mind, this is the first bear market where the Fed, I mean, this is what drives me nuts. Everyone's so regimented. I still remember when I was calling the high at 69,000 with the drop to 20,000, um, everyone was telling me, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, the, the on-chain analysis shows we're going to 100,000, X, Y, and Z, you know, and I'm like, dude, the charts are the charts. Psychology is psychology. It's worked for hundreds, if not thousands of years, but somehow you're going to come in here and say that, oh, some new metric, you know, on-chain analysis is going to play out. To me, on-chain analysis is the same as fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis long-term makes sense. 
in the short term, it has nothing to do with greed and fear. Greed and fear drive the markets. That's just a simple explanation, and it's absolutely true. So when you have this scenario, guys, where you have greed and fear, guess what? Fear is going to trump fundamentals on-chain analysis every time. In a recent broadcast, Soloway emphasized that the $30,500 level is a historically crucial psychological level for Bitcoin investors. He stated that for Bitcoin prices to indicate a new bull market, they would need to break above that level and remain there for several days. However, since that did not happen, Soloway anticipates a reversal that could take Bitcoin prices below another critical level. Additionally, he is skeptical of the narrative surrounding a possible altcoin rally in the short term. In the broadcast, Soloway provides further details on his Bitcoin and crypto outlook, as well as his perspective on the overall U.S. economy. Now at a point, and I've said this before, number one, we're in a cycle where the Fed is not printing money. That's very, very tricky for Bitcoin. Doesn't mean Bitcoin's not going to break out here, but it makes it harder. So to think that we're going to get the same four-year cycle when Bitcoin is not being propelled by massive inflows of money from the Federal Reserve, from the U.S. government, et cetera, that's problematic. In addition, every which way, I'm seeing Gary Gensler and the SEC suing this person or this company or that company. There's a lot of issues here. Big money is not going to commit. So again, I bring my, bring my point back to saying, well, who is going to drive the alt season if all the small investors are banking on it, thus in? And the answer is... Well, big money's not coming to the rescue because they're not willing to commit capital on major amounts because there's no clarity. There's no structure. There's no rules in the crypto markets yet. I mean, literally Coinbase yesterday said that they were thinking about moving out of the U.S. because they have no clarity. And this is a publicly traded company. So anyways, my point is this, guys. Be careful here, again, in the crypto markets. I have seen it before and I've seen it again. The bullishness in Bitcoin and crypto right now is equal to the bullishness we saw at 69,000. That to me is a warning sign because to me, that's a negative divergence. To see that much bullishness at such a lower price, that is not a good sign. Now, again, will we see new lows on Bitcoin? Will my 12 to 13,000 you know, signal come true? Will 9,000 maybe get hit? I don't know. The point is, just be careful up here. Make it prove that we can get above 30500 by price getting there, staying there for at least a week. Then you can start to say, okay, now for sure the lows are in. Doesn't mean we won't have pullbacks, but at least the lows are in. All right, so number one, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the market. We're seeing the market selling off this morning. We have the S&P futures down over 20 points. NASDAQ futures down about 100 plus points. The kicker here is, Partly earnings, right? We got some earnings out of Netflix. We're going to discuss that in just a minute. But overall, really what's going on here is more than anything, you have some Fed commentary that is starting to spook the market a little bit. For instance, I believe there was one Fed, I don't know if it was Bullard, but he basically came out and said he doesn't see a recession and the Fed has to stay the course and continue to raise interest rates. Now, the issue with that is that we just heard last week from the Federal Reserve that we were going to have a mild recession. So there's this dichotomy, there's this divergence building within the Fed where some people are still saying, hey, listen, mild recession, but we're going to still raise interest rates. That's freaking the market out because the market is smarter. You look at the 10-year yield, it's all the way down. All right. You don't have the 10 year yield trading where the Fed funds rate is trading at 5%. You have it in the 3% range because the markets are anticipating that essentially we're going to have a recession. If the Fed is saying we need, we're going to have a mild recession. And remember, their track record is that, oh, don't worry about inflation. It's going to be transitory. What do you guys think when they say a mild recession? Do you think it's just going to be like, nah, no big deal, mild recession? Personally, I'd be a little bit more nervous, all right? And again, that's the kicker. Not only that, but then you had, again, a Fed official this morning saying, hey, we got to continue to stay the course and raise rates. So at what point does a mild recession, which probably already means that they're telling you it's mild, but they know it's going to be worse, if they keep raising rates, what happens next? A mild recession turns into them telling you it's going to be a mid-level recession, and then it actually is going to be a much worse recession. And then you go, by the way, there are stocks out there, Apple, Microsoft, trading at valuations that they're almost at all-time highs. They're trading at forward PEs where they were a year or two ago when we had the bull market. 
That is not healthy. They are being used as a cushion. They're being used as a safety net. Those, to me, are some of the biggest shorts out there when reality strikes that we will see a recession in the second half. And it's not just going to be a small recession. It's going to be a long recession. Gareth Solway's analysis points out that the current Bitcoin chart has similarities with the crypto assets chart around the time it hit its all-time high in November 2021. Soloway had called the top then, and now he is doing the same thing despite significant losses over the past year. According to Soloway, a similar downtrend would lead to Bitcoin prices falling from the current price of $28,700 to $14,000 or less. Soloway's outlook for the U.S. economy is also gloomy. Policymakers' preference for half-truths and denial of the obvious until everything hits the roof is not surprising. Please share your thoughts on Soloway's analysis of Bitcoin and the overall economy in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.